Hello and welcome to the Maths Free Resource Library. Um, the aim of this video is to show you the structure of the Maths Free Resource Library um, so that you can use it most effectively. The idea of it is that it's just a massive bank of resources that you can use in your teaching um, but because there's so much in there sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming to look at so hopefully after watching this video um, you'll kind of understand the layout and you'll be able to navigate a little bit more easily. Um, the first thing is when you download the Maths Free Resource Library this is the folder you're going to get, Maths Free Resource Library obviously. Now when you open there uh, you'll see there's lots of other folders within that. Um, these top four correspond to the four main areas of maths, algebra, geometry, and measure, number and statistics. So if for example I go into algebra you've got a load of uh, folders here. Each of these folders has loads of resources for that topic. So for example if I open equations there's basically a, a load of resources on equations that you could use there. Now obviously that folder itself isn't really that helpful because there's just so much in there it's going to take ages to go through. That's why for each area I've created an index. So here is the index for the algebra section and I'd strongly recommend, particularly if you've not used this uh, resource before, that you use the indexes initially. So if I open the index for algebra, uh, it gives me this. So these are all the resources that are in those folders. This tab, for example, is the equations tab. Uh, that corresponds to the equations folder. So everything that's in there is in here. Now, when you're looking to teach an equations topic, the idea is that maybe you want to look through this first and see if you can find something um, that might be kind of what you were looking for. So if I just pick something, say, at random, uh, maybe completing the square, this, lesson, this is the first lesson on completing the square. If I then click this here, it actually takes you straight to the presentation that is in that folder. So you don't need to look through the folder. You can look through the index and open everything through there. So this lesson on completing the square. Um, so those of you who've used my stuff before know that when I put a lesson together, I will tend to have a starter activity for the students that either recaps prior knowledge or is something that is useful for them uh, in the explanations that are going to come for that topic. So there's a starter there which you can just put on the board and then have a discussion about um, depending on how it goes there's you can click through and it has kind of how to solve the problems and the answers there too. A um, little bit of an introduction, some patterns, again I'm just clicking through this very quickly the idea is that you can use this to explain uh, the topic to students. And then there's some more examples of how to do it Again, you can kind of click through this. It, it's really important, though, that you, if you use a resource like this, you need to have gone through it a few times yourself. Um, it, it's never that good when it, when sort of teachers are just clicking and stuff's happening. You need to be kind of talking. This is kind of backing up everything I'd be saying to the students at the time. Okay. So anyway, there's a load of examples there, and at the end of the PowerPoint, there's a bit of a plenary to go with it. The plenary might be a question, uh, some questions based on that topic, uh, or just or something a bit different. So that, for example, is a first lesson on completing the square. There's also a second lesson on completing the square too. So you could use those um, pretty much as they are. With a lot of the other lessons too, again, you can look in graphs, you can look in inequalities. Um, for the completing the square one, it was just the presentations because we had a book that had a lot of good questions in, so we used that. But for a lot of them as well, I've also put a set of questions. So for example, if I look at this one, using one graph to solve another, uh, solve it like so where you get an equation to solve but you have to use a different graph to solve it uh, again there's a presentation there that you could use to kind of help teach that topic with plenaries and answers and things like that but it's also got a worksheet with it so you can open that straight from here too and it's some questions that link to that lesson uh, the answers to this one are all in the presentation and um, other ones if there's answers then norm normally be kind of at the bottom so that's kind of the general way this works. Not everything in here is mine. You'll see that probably a lot of it is. But if I've used something or included something that someone else had provided freely, I've where I was where I knew where it came from, I've included a link at the side. So for example, if you click on all these, these are all hyperlinked. So for example, if you liked this particular activity and you're wondering, oh, I wonder if there's any more like it, you could click on the user or the the source for that resource and it should hopefully open an in internet browser you can then maybe see if they've got anything extra in there. So that's again all hyperlinked if possible. If you happen to know where and if you happen to see a resource and it's got nothing there and you know where it came from, please let me know and I can put it in as well. 
Uh, a lot of these things have been found like in folders as I've uh, taught in different places. So anyway, that's the general structure. So that's the index for algebra. Uh, the others generally look the same. So geometry and measures again as an index with all the kind of things in the various folders there. So uh, beyond that, we've got an A-level folder. So beyond this four, we've got this A-level. This is still in the structure. I say the old structure. It's the structure that we're still using. Uh, it's due to change next year. So this will probably all get a bit of a revamp. Um, but again, you can kind of pick out areas. So further pure one, there's a load of resources there. There's a load of past papers. Uh, this is all aimed at Ed Excel. Again, basically just loads of stuff for you to use. A level is a bit easier to navigate, but if you're still not sure, there's an index too. Uh, also, I've never got to the heights of M5, so there's no resources there at all, just past papers. Um, within there, also, I'll come back to this number six in a moment. Number seven has some stuff for revision and tests. Um, other kind of has things that doesn't really fit in anywhere else. Again, if I open the index that's there, We've got displays, so things you can put on displays in your wall. So, for example, 17 equations that change the world, some posters to go up. Good answer to the uh, question, what's the point of algebra, having those up. Gifted and talented, uh, the guys who do the UK Maths Challenge run mentoring papers every month that they send out. So some of those are in here. So, for example, if I open that, we've got loads of folders of mentoring questions, ideal for stretching students. If I look at the most recent one, this is for February 2017. So again, it's just a lot of mathematical questions that really test students' understanding and get them thinking in different ways. Uh, I actually give these out to all my students in uh, the various ages, and they have them in the back of their books, and they can work on them at home if they want, or they can work on them kind of in lessons if they finish activities. So they're really good to have as well. So that's all those. They also do them for intermediate and senior levels. Also, Puzzle of the Week, uh, these are not necessarily my puzzles, they're just maths puzzles I've found over many years, and I'm starting to put them together as like a school competition, so there's a few years of puzzles in there. Fun Stuff and Investigations is probably the biggest folder, uh, just stuff that doesn't fit in anywhere else. Uh, so we've got a PowerPoint of grids, so that grid, for example, that PowerPoint rather has loads of grids in, like sets of axes with different scales on that you could use if you're putting a presentation together. Lots of investigations, murder mysteries, thing in, things in here. I just go to the bottom, a couple of the most recent ones. Mr. Barnes, Arithmagons. Um, you'll probably be familiar with Arithmagons. This kind of thing where you know you have these three numbers, this, the number here is what you get when you add those two together, and so on. But hang on, if it's in reverse, so that is the sum of those two, that is the sum of those two, that is the sum of those two. Suddenly adds a whole extra dimension to the thought processes. And Mr. Barton's put a load together on actual different topics as well. I love this one on midpoints. So there's a coordinate, there's a coordinate, put the midpoint in between. There's a coordinate, there's a coordinate, put the midpoint in between. But what if those are the three midpoints? What two coordinates have that as a midpoint? What two coordinates, that, this one obviously has to be the same, have that as a midpoint? Again, it's suddenly a much higher level thinking, and all the students can access it, but it then has a great extension for the more able. Um, in addition to those, he's also done um, Venn diagrams idea as well. Again, you may have seen these loads of topics. Um, again, just pick out angles and triangles, maybe. So, can the students sketch a triangle in there with the angles labeled that's isosceles? Can they put one in there that has an, a 70 degree angle? Can they put one in the middle that satisfies both and one that satisfies neither? If they can't put one in the middle, why not? If you go down triple Venn diagram, it's got to be isosceles, have a 40 degree angle, has one obtuse angle, and all the various combinations that come with that. So I think these are a really good way of teaching. You can do this for nearly any topic. So again, they're, they're in there if you were looking for something like that. Um, he's also got his rich tasks. Uh, there's also another folder somewhere. Maths relays. A lot of these from Chris Smith on the TES, some of these I've done myself, but again, if I just pick one out, maybe these kinds of things where students answer that question, if they get it right, they answer that question, if they get it right, they answer that question, and so on. Again, you'd have to print these out, but I'm just sharing some stuff that's in here. Okay, I'll go to the last folder, the one I missed out before, which is this one. This is my kind of latest project, I guess. Resource schemes of work. So, you've got tons of resources in here. Um, what I'm trying to do is put together schemes of work with all these in. Um, 
So, for example, year seven and eight are actually, I would never say finished, but they're, they are there, you know, there's an awful lot of stuff in there, and they're all organized by topic in order. Um, year nine, ten, eleven are currently under construction. If I show you what year seven looks like, this is our basically year seven scheme of learning for the whole year. If again I open the year seven scheme of learning spreadsheet to show you what it looks like. So this is term one. These are the learning objectives. These are kind of the title of that topic area. These are the resources that are in there. And it's emphasized that teachers don't have to use any of this stuff, but this is stuff you could use if you wanted to. For example, if I look at this one, this is one of the first things we do with year seven. It's actually basic algebra. The reasoning behind that is because they need kind of a lot of practice at algebra. And if you do it first, then any time you do another topic, you can remind them of algebra and use it. So for example, after this, when we do some geometry, some area, perimeter, and volume, you can actually use some of the algebra they've learned here and show them it in context. Term two, you've got you know, fractions, decimals, properties of numbers. Suddenly, well, hang on, we did equations earlier. Can we do an equation? What if there's fractions answers? What if there's negative answers? That kind of thing, it re recaps it. Averages, timetables, diagrams. Well, averages, you know, there's lots of questions where you could use a bit of an equation building to solve questions involving those. Angles, you can use equations and algebra in that as well. So that's why it's first. But to show you the idea, these ones that are numbered, one, two, three, four, five, six, these are a sequence of lessons that link to each other. So, for example, um, we have a bit of getting them excited about algebra. It's a kind of magic which was featured on TES a while ago. Not one of my lessons, uh, but we've put it in there as a starting point. Using algebra to make a magic square. So if I open it, for example, this is just basic substitution. Uh, if they choose values for A, B and C, this will make a magic square. Okay. If I then open the document that goes with it, what they can do is, here's three values of A, B, and C, substitute them in there, it's a magic square, what's the magic number? Choose their own. So now they can choose their own. Why is the magic number always triple the middle number? That sort of thing. Um, so that's an example lesson. Then we have a couple here on writing expressions. You know, if I say, I think of a number, I times it by three, then I add four, then I divide that by seven, what does that look like if it's written down? The one after that is the other way around. Here's a load of algebra. Can you tell me what calculations that is and what order that's in? Then like terms. Simplifying expressions. 2x add 5x is uh, 7x. That sort of thing. No negative numbers or anything at this point. Just basic stuff. And then a lesson on swapped orders to finish. Um, so this one. Oh, it's already opened. Okay. So this one is this kind of idea. So... Uh, if I have a number, I times it by 3, then I add 5, I get an answer. What if I swap the orders, though? Again, you can click through this on the board. I normally then ask students, uh, give me a number. Uh, we'll put it into those two boxes on the left, see what happens to the boxes on the right. So the operations are the other way. Uh, if they really don't want to say anything, then, well, okay, we'll have an example here. The bottom one's 10 more. Okay, fair enough. What if we pick a different number? Okay, the bottom one's 10 more again. Why is that? Can they use algebra to show why? And again, the idea is to tease this out of them. I should say as well that all these lessons, because they've got the animations in, I actually put them on a Google Classroom, so actually the students can access them at any time if they do need to review something. So that's a real advantage of having all these animations in. But that would be our algebra unit. Also, though, if teachers want to do it a different way, there's lots of investigations here. So, for example, there's an activity from Enrich that we've put in on grid numbers. So you could use that instead. Um, um, rich tasks from Mr. Barton's, more Enrich stuff. Um, one of the arithmogons from Mr. Barton again. So here's an arithmogon for simplifying expressions. And basically every unit has a sequence of lessons, if you want to follow it, numbered, or loads of other resources you could use. In addition to that, at the end of Term 1, You've got um, a set of review questions, there's an assessment, um, and which looks like this. So it's an assessment on all the units from that term. There's a mark scheme there as well. And we also give students this. Uh, after the test, because I sometimes find that when you've done a test with students, you kind of give them it back and they might not do anything with it. Well, what we do is we give students this. This is every question from the test and the topic from that term 
that was in that particular part of the question. So question 3a was small, you know, cubes in a cuboid. 4a was area of rectangles. And what we do is we get students to go through the whole their own test with it marked, and they have to highlight any questions where they answered where they lost marks basically, and it gives them an instant list of things that maybe they want to revisit. And of course, at the bottom, how many marks did you lose because you did made careless mistakes? Now that's all the way through. So term two has the same thing. It has all the stuff for those end of term two test. Term three, we've got an end of year test in there. We have an end of year test a bit early. Then a couple more topics after that. In addition to that, we've got extra activities throughout the term. So in term one, we make time in that term to do a mass challenge paper with all of them. What students then do is they do the mass challenge paper, we mark it, and then I put this on the board, and they choose a question to come and explain to the class how did they answer it. So that has all the questions that were from that mass challenge paper. We've also put some of the maths relays in, so there's two maths relays in to do at some point that term. Teachers can do it whenever they want. There's some group challenges, so again, here's a load of questions they can work on in groups, like collaborating. There's the stuff for term two. There's the stuff for term three. Um, etc. Year 8 is exactly the same idea, not the same topics obviously, so again if you go in here you've got loads of stuff uh, that you could potentially use. One last thing I'll say as well is that we currently teach mixed ability um, which means that obviously we have to have differentiated activities. Some activities are differentiated by the fact that it's a low entry high ceiling that students can all access it and then extend it as an investigation um, also, though, when I put when I put questions together, I try to make sure that there's a big range of them. So, for example, here uh, we have one angles review. So this is reviewing the angles work from year seven. So this is just kind of basic angles with a little bit more in. Obviously, triangles and so on. There's a puzzle, but then we've got a load of UKMT questions to change the more able. And I always say to students, it's kind of up to you to choose where you want to work. I'm not going to be the person who gives you guys a green sheet and you guys a red sheet because I think you guys are better. I give them all the same sheet and they can choose at any point to extend themselves or maybe you know go down a level if they're finding things a little bit difficult. Um, if I just show you some other examples, um, so some ratio problems here. So there's some kind of more standard ratio problems. Here's some challenge ratio problems that are more difficult, but based on the same thing. Uh, division in a ratio, again, more standard questions. These ones all add, have a little extra dimension. Okay, anyway, that's the Mastery Resource Library. Thank you very much for listening to me talking uh, through all that. Please don't hesitate to contact me via the website if there's anything that maybe isn't clear or if you've spotted any resources in there that maybe shouldn't be in there. Thank you very much for listening.